Live from Washington, this is BBC News. Three Americans are on their way home after the largest prisoner swap between the West and Russia since the end of the Cold War. They include the journalist Evan Gershkovich. New reports are emerging about the assassination of Hamas's political leader, Ismail Haniya. And here in the US, Democratic delegates begin voting for the party's presidential nominee, which is set to be Kamala Harris. Hello, I'm Regini Vaidinath and welcome to the programme. We begin with the breakthrough in diplomatic negotiations, which saw the largest prisoner swap between Russia, the US and other Western nations since the Cold War. Three US citizens who were among those released are making their way home now to the US and are expected to arrive in the next couple of hours. They are the Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gerskovich on the left and on the right, former US Marine Paul Whelan and Radio Free Europe journalist Alsu Kurmasheva. Well, this photo shows them on a phone call with President Joe Biden after their release. In addition, Vladimir Karamurza, the Russian-British journalist who holds a US green card, was freed in the deal. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. Now let's take a look at some of the other stories making the news. The 17-year-old boy charged with murdering three girls and attempting to murder ten others in Southport has appeared in court in Liverpool. He can now be named as Axel Mugunwa Ruda Kubana after the judge lifted reporting restrictions. It's understood that the teenager from Lancashire has a diagnosis of autism spectrum disorder. The Prime Minister's condemned protesters following two nights of violence across parts of England in the wake of those killings in Southport. After crisis talks with police chiefs, Sir Keir Starmer held a news conference announcing that police forces across the country are going to cooperate more when it comes to tackling violent disorder. You're live with BBC News. Now, an investigation published in the New York Times on Thursdays revealed new details about the assassination of Hamas's political leader, Ismail Haniya, in Iran. Mr Haniya was in Tehran for the inauguration of the newly elected Iranian president, Masoud Pazeshkian. As a high-level ally, Haniya was staying inside the presidential palace complex at a VIP guest house hosted by the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. In the early hours of Wednesday morning, there was an explosion in the guest house, killing Ismail Haniya. Now, before we go, let's turn to some other news from around the world. And a curfew has been imposed in Nigeria following protests against the high cost of living. Um, and those protests were, quote, hijacked by thugs. Police fired tear gas to break up groups of demonstrators in the capital Abuja. Nigeria is struggling with soaring inflation and a devalued currency after the country's president ended a fuel subsidy. Well, we'll have more on, of course, the return of those three Amer Americans who've been uh, released in that prisoner swap. I'm Regini Vaidinathan. Do stay with us here on BBC News. This is BBC News. We'll have the headlines for you at the top of the hour, which is straight after this programme. Live from Washington, this is BBC News. Three Americans are on their way home after the largest prisoner swap between the West and Russia since the Cold War. They include the journalist Evan Gershkovich. New reports are emerging about the assassination of Hamas's political leader, Ismail Haniya. And here in the US, Democratic delegates begin voting for the party's presidential nominee, which is set to be Kamala Harris. Hello, I'm Regini Vaidinath and welcome to This Hour. We begin with the breakthrough in diplomatic negotiations, which saw the largest prisoner swap between Russia, the US and other Western nations since the Cold War. Three US citizens who were among those released are making their way home to the US and are expected to arrive in the next few hours. 
They are Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gerskovich on the left. And on the right, former U.S. Marine Paul Whelan and Radio Free Europe journalist Al Sukurumasheva. Well, this photo shows them on a phone call with President Joe Biden after their release. In addition, Vladimir Karamurza, the Russian-British journalist who holds a U.S. green card, was freed in the deal. Around the world and across the U.K., this is BBC News. Now let's take a look at some of the other stories making the news. The 17-year-old boy charged with murdering three girls and attempting to murder 10 others in Southport has appeared in court in Liverpool. He can now be named as Axel Muganwa Rudakubana after the judge lifted reporting restrictions. It's understood that the teenager from Lancashire has a diagnosis of autism spectrum disorder. The Prime Minister's condemned protesters following two nights of violence across parts of England in the wake of those killings in Southport. After crisis talks with police, Sir Keir Starmer held a news conference announcing that forces across the country are going to coordinate more on tackling violent disorder. You're live with BBC News. An investigation published in the New York Times on Thursday has revealed new details about the assassination of Hamas's political leader Ismail Haniyeh in Iran. Ismail Haniyeh was in Tehran for the inauguration of the newly elected Iranian president Massoud Pazeshkian. As a high-level ally, Haniyeh was staying inside the presidential palace complex at a VIP guest house hosted by the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. In the early hours of Wednesday morning, there was an explosion in the guest house, killing Mr. Haniyeh. The New York Times, citing sources within the IRGC, reports that the explosion wasn't from a missile, but rather from a bomb that was hidden in the guest house weeks or even months before it was detonated. Jude Shearer in there, and you can read his article on the BBC News website. Well, before we go, let's take you to the scene live at Joint Base Andrews in Maryland. You can see reporters waiting on the tarmac. They are waiting as three Americans are on their way home after the largest prisoner swap between the West and Russia since the Cold War. We will bring you the very latest on that. They're due to land in about an hour from now. I'm Regini Vardinavan. Do stay with us. This is BBC News. We'll have the headlines for you at the top of the hour, which is straight after this programme. Live from Washington, this is BBC News. Three Americans are on their way home after the largest prisoner swap between the West and Russia since the Cold War. They include the journalist Evan Gershkovich. New reports are emerging about the details around the assassination of Hamas's political leader Ismail Haniyeh. And here in the US, Democratic delegates begin voting for the party's presidential nominee, which is set to be Kamala Harris. Hello, I'm Regini Vaidenard and welcome to this hour. Well, we begin with the breakthrough in diplomatic negotiations, which saw the largest prisoner swap between Russia, the US and other Western nations since the Cold War. Three American citizens who are among those released are making their way home to the US and they are expected to arrive within the hour. They are Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershkovich on the left and on the right, former U.S. Marine Paul Whelan and Radio Free Europe journalist Alsu Kurmasheva. Well, this photo shows them on a phone call with President Joe Biden after their release. In addition, Vladimir Karamurza, the Russian-British journalist who holds an American green card, was freed in the deal. And we heard earlier from President Biden and Vice President Harris is also there. President Biden saying this was a real example of successful diplomacy and strong alliances because as we've been saying this involved a number of other countries. Turkey played a role, Germany played a pivotal role in this as well. A number of Western countries came together to broker this deal and of course this is just as much about 
human connection as it is anything else. The politics, of course, is secondary to everyone on that tarmac right now. Paul Whelan, a former Marine. Evan Gershevich, there, Wall Street Journal reporter. And Alsu Kormasheva, back home on American soil at Joint Base Andrews. They touched down about 15 minutes ago. They were greeted off the plane by President Biden and Vice President Harris. There's no doubt that this is a huge moment in history and a huge moment in international diplomacy. Evan Gershkovich there making a phone call while the cameras point at him. And as President Biden said earlier, this, the largest prisoner swap between the West and Russia, has been hailed as a feat of diplomacy. There you have it, President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris. I'm Regine Vivinarvan. Thanks for watching our continuing coverage. This is BBC News. Live from London, this is BBC News. Back home, three Americans and a Kremlin critic who are being held in Russia arrive on US soil as part of the biggest prisoner swap deal since the Cold War. This is the scene live at Andrews Air Force Base where President Biden has come to greet them. In other news, the body of Hamas's political leader, Ismail Haniya, who was assassinated in Iran on Wednesday, is now in Qatar, where he'll be buried later. And more questions for the BBC over its handling of the Hugh Edwards scandal. The Culture Secretary asked the corporation to see if it can recoup any of his pay. Hello, I'm Mark Lobel. Let's start with the breaking news. And within the past few minutes, the US citizens who were part of the largest prisoner swap between Russia, the US and other Western nations since the Cold War have arrived back in the US. Let's take you live to the scene at Andrews Air Force Base in Maryland.